Oh, hi. All right. You may be wondering why I'm dressed like this. It's a great question. Ah, salty. Ugh. Tonight, I am answering the question that is on everybody's minds, and by everybody, I mean nobody. The question being, which of the DVD antagonists could I escape in a real-life trial? Now, to answer this question, we're going to assume three things. The first being that I actually know how to repair a generator because my real life generator repair skills are, let's say, suboptimal. So we're gonna run off the assumption that the entity downloads that information somehow into the survivor's heads so that they actually know what they're doing to have a bit of hope for the entity to feed off of, right? I mean, have you ever asked yourself why everybody in the trial seems to know how to repair a generator? I mean, I'm willing to bet that most of us watching this don't actually know how to repair a generator. Let me know if I'm wrong on that. Maybe I'm the only one. The second thing we're going to assume is that we're going up against each of these characters in the world of DVD, just a real life version of it in this hypothetical situation. And where this comes into play most is with licensed characters, because in some cases their DVD lore has been modified slightly from their original lore. An example of this would be Freddy. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe one of the ways you can combat Freddy in the movies is to just stay awake. But in DVD, you're kind of forced into the dream world and he can also hurt you even when you're not in the dream world, when you're just in the regular part of the entity's realm. Another example would be Pyramid Head. In Silent Hill 2, he can only manifest out of James Sunderland's grief and need for punishment. But in DBD, the entity has given him a new purpose, so he's no longer dependent on that. So we're going to be factoring in the world of DBD into our discussions, which may in some cases differ from how I would feel about it in their original lore. And the third thing that we're going to be assuming is that I could actually fight back. We know this is technically possible because in at least three of the Moris, the survivors actually do fight back. This suggests at least in theory that the survivors can, they just don't in game other than the pallets for the sake of gameplay. And once again, the question is, who could I escape? Not who could I beat or anything like that. So before you jump in the comments and say, well, there's no way you could beat that guy. I know, I'm not, I, I couldn't beat any of them. It's just, who could I escape? Sound good? And before we begin, let me know down in the comments, who do you think you could escape or not? All right, so I've decided to change up the naming of the tiers tonight. So the lowest tier or the ones that would be impossible for me to escape is gonna be not even brown pants can save me. Then we have a snowball's chance. Moving up, then we have a 0.001% chance. And then we move on to it would take a miracle. And finally, for the tier that I would be most likely to escape, it would be Trickster. All right, so as always, we're starting off with Trapper. And I'm going to put him in what would typically be B tier or 0.001% of a chance here. Uh, there's, it's incredibly unlikely that I'm escaping against Trapper. Getting stuck in a bear trap, mm, that would pretty much be it for me. In real life, those things mangle you up so bad, there's... There's no getting away from him after that. And I'm not like a trained tracker or anything like that, so there's a good chance that I'm not gonna see it and step right in it. So I'm going full Dwight on this one and saying, mm, there's almost no chance that I'm going to escape Trapper. The trick would be, could I avoid the traps or not? And like I said, probably not. Next up we have Wraith, and I'm putting Wraith in a snowball's chance because, well, it's plausible that I could find and avoid Trapper's traps, although unlikely, it's even less likely that I could escape and evade something that goes invisible or actually technically leaves the realm and comes back in. It would be utterly terrifying to go against something you could not see. And I think just that otherworldly aspect would throw me off so much that I'd have an even less likely chance of escaping. And plus, Wraith is really fast. Back in my prime, I've been known to be pretty fast myself, but I don't think there's any outrunning Wraith. So I'm going pretty low on that one. All right, next up we have Hillbilly, and I'm putting him in a 0.001% chance. You're not outrunning him. He's definitely going to be faster than you with his sprints. However, the one thing that I might have to my advantage is I'm a bit nimble. I can kind of jump out of the way quickly. So what I would probably try to do is bait him into a sprint and then at the last second dive out of the way. Because, I mean, in the game you can't do that, but in a real life trial, you could, right? I don't think we're going to be locked into just moving forward, backward, left, right, turn, that kind of stuff. So the key would be to dive out of the way, let him sprint past you, and then try to disappear, I guess. And next up we have Nurse, and I'm gonna put her right down at the bottom. Not even brown pants can save me. There's no chance at all. She's just too supernatural. I would have no idea what to do. I mean, yeah, we all know playing DBD, how to the strategy of going against her and whatnot, but imagine yourself in a real trial facing her for the first time. 
I'm just gonna be so mystified, I'm gonna have no idea how to counter her. The only thing that makes me think differently is her weapon really isn't super effective. A lot of the other weapons would actually do a whole lot more damage than hers. Hers is not super practical, so it's possible that you could tank a few more hits if, you know, gameplay and fairness and all of that was not in play. So that would be the only thing that I would think is possibly you could take more damage with her and that would buy you more time and you would be able to get out that way. But other than that, I don't think I would have a clue how to counter her quickly enough to be able to do anything about it. So there you go. All right, next up we have Myers. And this one I'm debating on. I'm gonna put him in a 0.001% chance. Now, a lot of you, I know what you're thinking. You're about to jump in the comments and be like, there's no way you were so wrong. And I probably am, but this is why I give me a 0.001% chance. Myers, he likes to take his time. He likes to stalk. He likes to just stand there nemesingly. Is that a word? I don't know. It is now. The point is, I'm kind of quick. I'm just gonna keep running away from him and running and running and running. And hopefully at some point, somebody finishes that fifth gen and we can get out of there. Because the point again is not, could I survive him indefinitely? Because obviously in the movies, he can keep going and going and going. But in a DVD trial, there is kind of a time limit. So the idea would just be to outlast him long enough to get out. And that's why I would give myself a 0.001% chance because it's possible that I could just keep outrunning him and then get out. Although again, very, 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 very unlikely. I know he's kind of like, you know, immortal and everything and the, you know, embodiment of evil, all of that stuff. That's why I wouldn't give myself more than a 0.001% chance, but it is possible that I could just get away and then escape. All right, next up we have Hag, where would I put her? I think I would put her in, it would take a miracle. So hear me out on this. I think that you run into a bit of the same issue you would with Trapper, right? At least I would, in terms of her little, what are they called? I can't even, her traps, there you go, that's the word. Her traps would be difficult to avoid, difficult to spot, even more than a bear trap, I think, because it's just a little scratch mark on the ground in the dirt that, you know, looks like dirt instead of an actual, like, physical trap that's a mechanical thing sitting in front of you. So it'd be even harder to spot. So you'd probably trigger those somewhat easily, right? However, if you just book it, even when she appears, you could kind of book it out of there. Again, I know the survivors are slower than the killers for gameplay reasons, but in a real-life trial, we're kind of assuming that some of the, at least the rules that apply to gameplay to keep it fair, sort of don't apply in a real life situation. So what I'm thinking is you could kind of just keep booking it through, you know, and she would appear suddenly, but you'd already be out of range of her attack and then could outrun her a little bit because she's yeah, not, not super fast. So all that to say, I don't know. She also seems a bit like you could probably fight back slightly. I don't know. She does have the question of all her magic abilities and all that. And does she have any that aren't actually represented in the game? Lore wise, I'm talking. So there is that question. Fair. But that's why I'm putting it would take a miracle. Still super unlikely, but maybe more likely than some of the others so far, I would say. I don't know. Again, I'm making this all up as I go. If you're really that upset about it, you're probably taking this video a lot more seriously than I am. So just just going to put that out there. All right, next up is Doctor. Doctor, or he's going in a snowball's chance. Yeah, uh, it just, uh, the fact is he can always find you. Just shocks the air, and if you're within that shock radius, you're gonna scream. It's gonna hurt, it's gonna suck. I don't even wanna go through with it. Like, it's it's just, no, there's no way I'm escaping from him. And I'm probably just gonna like, you know, pass out from fright the first time I see him because he just looks hideous and just terrifying and all that stuff. So, I don't know, yeah, there's, there's no way. Snowball's chance at best. All right, next up is Huntress. And if you, I was just to go off of gameplay, like my initial reaction as I was thinking these through earlier today, speed and dexterity were always kind of my thing. So maybe I could dodge her hatchets, but then I thought about it further and I realized after I remembered reading her lore, there's absolutely no way. She's insane. She's so fast, haunting and hunting and just unstoppable. There's 0% there's chance that I would get away from her. Absolutely none. Not even brown pants can save me. And if you think you could get away from her, just go read her lore. There is no getting away from her. There is only terror with her. So, yeah. Anywho. All right, next up is Bubba. Hmm, I don't know where I want to put him. I'm going to put him in It Would Take a Miracle. The reason why is I think it is possible that I could outthink him. I think. Obviously, he's bigger. He's tougher. He's got a chainsaw. That puts me at a disadvantage. But it is possible that I could outthink him. 
outstrategize him. And that bumps him up for me in terms of my potential survivability. I could maybe outthink him long enough to escape. I don't know. And next up is Freddy. And Freddy is going to be another not even brown pants can save me. Because again, in DBD, you're kind of forced into the dream world. There's no like, well, I'm just going to stay awake for the whole trial. Like, no, you, you get forced into the dream world. And even outside of the dream world, he can still hurt you. And so the first time that I'm working on a gen and then you just start to see the blood ooze out of it. And then he just slowly rises out of it. My last thought is going to be, I'm glad I brought my brown pants, but they're not going to save me. So yeah, no, he's... He's, he's in that bottom tier. There's there's no chance at all. All right, next up we have Pig. And oh gosh, this one actually kind of terrifies me to think about. Oh, I don't know. The, the whole concept of the jigsaw boxes and the, the helmets. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to put her in a 0.001% chance. There's a good chance I'm not going to make it through that one. Yeah, the jigsaw boxes. She gets one of those helmets on me. It's, it's, that's going to be game over for me, probably, I think. All right, next up we have Clown, and I'm going to put him in. It would take a miracle. I don't know. It's hard to say because once the tonic hits you, you're all disoriented, dizzy, you get slowed down, you're coughing, all that fun stuff. But then it seems of all of the killer's abilities that that might be the one that would be easiest to tough through. I'm not saying easy, just easy, easier than the other ones too tough through and to try to make out where you're going and doing and you'd be pretty easy to outrun and to be nimble around and to you know kind of know when he's coming and all that stuff so it just I don't know I I feel like of all of them probably so far that I would stand the best chance of escaping him just because of some of those things all right next up we have spirit and she's going straight down into the not even brown pants can save me because the again if, if everything that I said about nurse times 10 there's no, I mean, no chance. She's even more terrifying than nurse. She would throw me off even more hearing just that kind of, whoosh, you know, and then seeing her appear and hit me it, it like, no, thank you. And then she's got the katana, which is going to be way more effective than the nurse's little bone saw thing. So yeah, there's no way. There's no way I would even put her down a further tier if I had more tears. Yeah, there's there's no chance. All right, the Legion, this one's going to be a bit of a thought experiment, right? So if it was just one of them, I think I would stand a decent chance. Again, not guaranteed, not like, oh yeah, I definitely have it in the bag. More like maybe a 50-50 if it was one of them. And especially depending which one of them, because they are kind of different. If it was Frank, less likely. If it was Julie or Joey, maybe. If it was Susie, chances go up a little bit more because I think Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think she's the less confident one. So it kind of depends if it was all of them or if it was one of them. And if it was one of them, which one of them was it? Because obviously some of them are going to be more aggressive than others. All right. So where do I want to put them? I would put them here if it was all four of them. The reason why is because then it would be one on one because I'm assuming I have a team of other survivors. It's just not me versus all of them. Right. So it would then be one on one at that point or they could go four on one and just pick us off one by one. So that might reduce the chances, actually. So I'm talking myself into putting him putting them down a tier. That being said, if it's just one of them, I could maybe bump them up a tier, maybe even bump them up here where it was like, hey, my chances go up significantly. Not again, not guaranteed just up. I'm looking at the others down a tier and I'm feeling like I would stand a better chance against Legion than I would against those if it was one on one, which again, we're going off of like DBD sort of because obviously I'm betting some of the rules of the trial because of gameplay. So I guess there's only one of them because of gameplay. So if I'm going off of more lore or what reality would be, it would be all four of them. Okay, so now I'm talking to myself out of it. I would I would put it in. It would take a miracle. If they all split up and just w did one-on-one, -on -one, then maybe we could stand a chance of fighting back. Obviously, in the Mori, the survivor actually does kind of get a good shot in that actually causes the Legion to stumble back a bit. So, I mean, of all the killers on the roster, they are probably the ones that we would stand the best chance of actually fighting against. And again, depending on how they decided to approach, there's a chance that we could take them on, is all I'm saying. There's a chance. It would take a miracle, but there's a chance. All right, next up we have Plague, and there's no chance. No, none at all. I'm not escaping Plague. She's terrifying and gross, and I just can't imagine being just covered in vomit, getting sick, and then she has her corrupt purge, which just burns away your flesh and all of that fun stuff. And Yeah, no, there's no way. There's no way. Not at all. Mm-mm, none. 
Mm -mm. Our next up is Ghostface, and I'm going to put him in a 0.001% chance. Here's the thing. He's no doubt smarter than me, more cunning than me, more stealthy than me. He's going to sneak up on me. The only chance I have is that he somehow fails in doing that. There's a chance. Not a very big one. So if I saw him coming, he's one of those that you could probably push back on a little bit, fight, get a shot in, whatever. The reality, though, is you're not going to see him coming. He's going to surprise you. He's going to come from the shadows. You're not going to know when he's, when he's about to hit you. It's going to be over before you know it. So, yeah, I'm putting him in a 0.001% chance. Maybe he steps on a twig and I can turn around in time and duck out of the way or something like that. But in reality, you'll probably never see him coming. So there you go. All right, Demo, I'm going to put him in a snowball's chance. The only reason I'm not putting him in bottom tier is because in the show, a group of teenagers gets away from him. So there's a chance. Now, of course, they also had one of their friends with superpowers. That certainly helps. But the reality is there's a chance. A snowball's chance, but a chance nonetheless. Our next up, we have Oni. And yeah, yeah, right down in that bottom tier. No way. No way. This is how I feel about him when I actually go against him in a DBD trial. There's no way I'm escaping. None at all. Real life, even less. No chance. Not even brown pants will save me from him. You hear that roar. You see him just demon dashing at you. You're just like, I'm done. Um, it's it's over. I, I don't it's, forget this gen. Like, I, it's no, it's done. All right, Deathslinger. And Deathslinger, mm, okay. So, yeah, he's a 0.001% chance. So, the reason why is, theoretically, you could dip and dodge and do all that fun stuff to try to get him to miss his shots, right? The problem is, his lore describes him as an incredibly skilled bounty hunter that is pretty ruthless, kind of gets his person all the time. Yeah, I, I don't think you're getting away from him. I, I don't think I'm getting away from him, but there's a chance you could... Because he, he, he is someone you could outrun, technically, because he does have the, the knee problem deal. But he has the ranged weapon, obviously. So, and getting hit by that... Yeah, there's no shaking that off. That thing, that's not, no, like that, 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 it's huge. So you get hit with that, you're pretty much done. Your only chance would be to actually just kind of zig and zag and hope that he doesn't hit you and he misses his shot and then he spends a whole lot of time reloading and you can make distance. So there's a chance, not a big chance, there's a chance. All right, Pyramid Head. Oh, uh, yeah, bottom tier. I, I don't know that that one needs explanation, but there's there's no way. Pyramid Head is completely unstoppable. There are some fates worse than death, and uh, going against Pyramid Head, that would be one of them. Okay, now this one's going to be controversial, but I'm going to put Blight up in It Would Take a Miracle. The reason why I'm putting him so high, there's two, actually. Number one, his weapon is a cane. Yes, it's a cane with a metal head. Yes, would that hurt? Absolutely. In terms of all the different weapons in the game, it's probably one of the least effective one of the most survivable in the game. You know, it kind of bops you with that. You're like, ow, and then you move on, right? I know I'm downplaying it, but the point is in comparison with all the other weapons, his is the most survivable, or one of the most at least. Then he's also zipping around all the time. So if you could time it right, you could duck out of the way and make him again, miss you and run straight past you. And then you can make distance. So yeah, you're not outrunning him, but you could outmaneuver him in theory. Again, not a great chance, but with a miracle, you might be able to escape him. Uh, I'm putting them up that high. All right, next up we have twins, and I'm gonna put them. Mm, I'm gonna put them up, and it would take a miracle as well. Because Victor, obviously, he's kind of the same thing as I was talking about with Blight. You could duck out of the way. It would be, I don't know, it would be probably harder actually, because it's just like this little creature that moves so quickly and squeals, and is you'd you'd be a little bit terrified. At least I would. And I'd be kind of standing there a little bit dazed. I think so. I think he'd be harder to to just dodge, but there is a bit of, you can kind of combat him a bit. So there's that going on. And then she seems like one that would be a little bit easier to be nimble around and get away from just because of how she moves and she kind of has all that you know, junk and stuff that she's scavenged hanging off of her, making her a little less nimble. I don't know. Again, I'm not saying it would be a great chance. I'm just saying it would be possibly a better chance than a lot of the others to escape them. All right, next up, we have Trickster, and I'm going to put Trickster in the highest tier. Obviously, the, the whole tier is named after him. These are my thoughts. So of all the killers, the Trickster, kind of like Legion, seems like the one that us as survivors would be able to fight against the hardest, probably be the most successful with, right? He's obviously got the range. 
However, those things don't seem like they do a whole ton of damage and you could actually close the gap and get in on him. Yes, he's got the bat, but again, if you get up close, that bat's not as good of a weapon really close in. So if you can get in on him and hit him and get close, he's going to be a lot more limited. And if you could get all four survivors to come in at the same time, he would be overpowered. Yes, he's still dangerous. Yes, he's actually very intelligent. But the point is, of all of the killers on the roster, he's probably the one you could stand the best chance of overpowering and even evading his abilities. So I'm going to put him up there. Again, I'm not saying it's an absolute escape for me. I'm just saying probably the best chance out of the whole roster. So Trekster's up there. All right, next up we have Nemesis, and I'm going to put him in a Snowball's Chance for one reason. I'm not a Stars member. If I was a Stars member, there's no way. I'm not, so there's a chance. Now, I know the Nemesis, he pretty much destroys anything that gets in his way. It doesn't matter if they're on the Stars team or not. He's just hunting them most of all, but anybody else who gets in his way, he pretty much eliminates. So, obviously, that's not like making me safe or anything, but it does give me a slight chance. A snowball's chance, but a slight chance. But other than that, he's a hulking beast, super quick, busts through walls, has the range, has the other zombies running around, which just complicates the whole matter. It's a, it's a very unlikely chance. A snowball's chance at best. So there you go. All right, next we have Pinhead. So Pinhead is one where, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, in the movies, I believe you can actually banish him by solving the box. So the thought was, well, maybe I would be, you know, I'm kind of nerdy. I, I, I can solve puzzles and stuff like that. Maybe I could solve the box. But the point is in DBD, that's not how it works. You don't banish him by solving the box. You slightly slow him down for a few minutes by solving the box. Yay. So... That, let's just take that off the table. No, there's no way, none at all. There's not even Brown Pants will save me. Absolutely, I there's I can't survive him. Nope, nope, sorry, can't do it. Can't even try. All right, next up we have Artist, and Artist is going in uh, Snowball's Chance, I think. They're just, just, yeah, she's, she's terrifying. And the crows flying through walls that can hurt you and then surround you with more crows. And it just seems like an all around bad situation. So, yeah, she's one of the strongest killers in the game. I think that would hold true in terms of a real life trial as well. Yeah, there's there's a chance it's a snowball's chance. The chance being she just completely misses you the whole trial and you somehow stay hidden and away from her and, and don't even look at her. And yeah, that's that's the chance. That's the snowball's chance. Then we have Onrio. Onrio is not even brown pants can save me. So obviously if again as i understand it the way to defeat her not defeat her the way to escape her in the movies is to simply pass on the curse one i'm not going to do that i don't i don't i'm not the type of person that i can be like hey i'm going to save my skin by selling someone else out i i just i don't think i could do that so that's not going to happen but that doesn't even happen in dvd you just again slightly slow her down by doing that anywho the whole point is you don't even really do that but the whole point is yeah, she's just going to be so supernatural, zipping around the map, peering out through the TVs. I don't think there's any way I'm escaping her. I just, I don't, I, did, I don't even know how I would go about trying to counter her. Even knowing how she works, I don't know how I go about countering her. Certainly, if I'm going against her for the first time ever in a trial, I, 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 no, there's no, there's no way I could figure it out in time to be able to escape her. Uh, I don't, I don't think that's possible. Dredge too. Dredge is going to be. Just absolutely, by the time you figure out you got to start locking lockers, he's going to start absorbing people. It's going to be a bad situation. By the time you figure out what the heck it is you're even facing, you're part of the dredge. That uh, he's, he's all the way down there. Yep. All right, next up we have Wesker, and he's, yeah, not even brown pants can save me. There's no way. My name's not Chris Redfield. I can't punch boulders. There's just no way I'm escaping him. He's too smart. He's too fast. He's too strong. He's too, whatever would stand in the way of me getting out, he's too much that. So, yeah, he's he's down there. All right, next up we have Knight, and if you've read his lore, there's no way. Absolutely no way. First off, there's four of them. Three of them can ghost their way through walls and can't be hurt. So, no, there's no way. And he's an incredibly ruthless fighter, along with his crew. No, if if he's going against you, you stand no chance at all. Uh, there's there's no way. Again, they number the survivors one to one, and 
they could just split up and completely destroy you within the matter of minutes. There's there's no way you're gonna have time to escape. That's that's what I'm thinking. So there's I could not escape them. All right, next up we have Skull Merchant, and I'm gonna put Skull Merchant up with Trickster. Like I said with Trickster, she's probably one that the survivors could overpower if they work together. And her weapon, though pretty massive and pretty terrifying, I don't think it would be super great up close either. She does have her other hand with the kind of metal claw thing, so that could be more decorative than anything, but could hurt at least. But her claw, if you got in close, she's not gonna be able to, you know, get that thing around to do too much damage, especially if you're all piling on her. So there's a chance with her being one of the more human killers, being all by herself, having a weapon that if you got in close enough, she it wouldn't be as effective. There's a chance that the whole team of survivors could overcome her. And so I would say of the whole roster, again, not guaranteed, not even a majority chance, just of them all, that's most likely for me to escape. So anywho, along with Trickster. All right, next up we have Singularity and I'm putting Singularity in a 0.001% chance. So if you get your hands on an EMP, you do stand a chance. He gets you with that claw though. That claw looks ruthless and probably just going to completely incapacitate you with one hit, but it is possible that if you could get your hands on an EMP, you do stand a chance for at least a short bit of time. Maybe you could buy enough time to be able to get the gens finished and get out. That's my thoughts on the Singularity. Again, being so new, I'm not as familiar with him. I might change my thoughts over time. I could change my thoughts on all of these. The reality is I'm probably not escaping any of them, but these are my chances as I'm thinking through them. Now, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on who you could escape or not. I wanted to take a moment to thank our channel members. And if you wanted to support the channel by becoming a member and gaining access to some unique perks, click that join button to learn more. If you enjoy the video, can you hit that like button to let me know and a comment down below. All those things really help me out in telling YouTube to show this video to more people. As always, you have been awesome, stay awesome, and we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.